Hi everyone, Heather here with Astrology with Heather.com and I am back with another special video. And this video is the next one in my series with Raphael from Radiant Reality on Astrology and Tarot. And today we're gonna to be talking about the Hierophant card. And if you wanna watch this full series, you're gonna to have to subscribe to both of our channels. And I highly recommend subscribing to Raphael's channel because he does these really awesome weekly forecasts. And Raphael, I never watch anyone's weekly forecasts because there's just so many and I have so many friends who do them. But I watch yours because there's they're always super accurate and they give me a completely different layer of information than I would get from the astrology. So um, I definitely recommend checking those out and uh, welcome back, Raphael. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, wow. I'd take that as high praise indeed. Um, thank you very much. Um, I'm just chuffed that you agreed to do the project with me. Uh, I'm learning so much. It's been brilliant. Uh, and I really love all of your forecasts as well because they, they're, it's like stuff that you can actually use, which is really, yeah. <laughs> really important. That's what I love about it. It's great. Yeah, same with yours. Like your style is very similar. Like it's very practical and usable information. It's not like floating off in the distance. And I think that's why these videos are so helpful too. I feel like I'm learning a lot and hopefully you're learning a lot and our audience is learning a lot. So yeah, it's been good. Absolutely. It's been great as well to to see like some of the overlap as well, because obviously I have like a, an, an understanding of the tarot and how it kind of ties into astrology. But you're like you're really fleshing that out for me. So it's given me like a, an extra understanding of, of how the cards kind of overlap and stuff. So we've got an interesting one today. We have the Hierophant. Um, so in readings, a lot of people see this and it's like, especially for new readers, this tends to be one of the ones that makes people go, oh, uh, not quite sure <laughs> you know, what, what, what to talk about here. Mm -hmm. So when you see this card, here's the Hierophant, there's again, as they all are, this one's really packed full of symbolism and there's tons to talk about here. But your Hierophant, so the word Hierophant actually means high priest. It's a, an old Greek word that means a high priest. And this would be somebody that was in charge of ritual, somebody that was in charge of ceremony. So in the previous talk, we talked about the emperor, right? And that was where you kind of met the father and the rules and the more kind of like the authority of life. Mm -hmm. uh, so the hierophant kind of builds on that and it takes it further. So the empress and the emperor talked about your parents and that kind of uh, dynamic, whereas the hierophant that's where you meet the world. This is where you go out into the world and you start to meet society. This is where you kind of see the, the rules, the regulations, the structures and the traditions of the world. Um, so I'm talking about all of those words and I know that there's one sign in particular that's probably coming to mind. Um, from those things that I've said, what, would, what, what sign would you talk about? Well, I would be looking a lot at um, Capricorn, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I know yeah. that you have this association with Taurus, but it, it does, even when I was reading over your description, I'm like, there's got to be some Saturn or some Capricorn in this, like similar to um, the Emperor when we talked about like Aries, but there's also this Capricornian energy. It's almost the same thing. Like there's Taurus, but it's like a Capricornian Taurus, mm -hmm. almost like a third decan Taurus. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, it totally is. And that's where you kind of see the overlap. So in the Hierophant card, you are now going to see kind of a blending of those two specific earth signs. Mm -hmm. um, and it really is that because when you talk about rules, regulations, structures, all of those things, and especially things like authority, you do start to talk about, you know, that is the realm of Capricorn, right? So in its Taurian aspect, this is where we meet uh, the, the values of the collective, what is acceptable so that's kind of like the almost like the physical uh the physical embodiment of the spiritual side of taurus energy you know so what we value in the world is kind of how we show up in it what's acceptable um you know where we find that sort of link with the outside world but not necessarily in terms of like the empress was more about the the sensual sort of stuff right mm -hmm. whereas the hierophant is more about the slow steady dependable what you can touch, what is traditional. And that's where you meet that kind of more steady Taurian energy. 
Okay. Yeah, definitely. I could totally see that. <laughs> and that's where I was talking about kind of like the decans because each decan of each sign has an association with um, another sign of that same element. And so the third decan of Taurus is actually like a blending of Taurus energy. Like Taurus is obviously predominant, but there's like a Capricornian filter or a Capricornian overlay to that energy where it's way more structured, way more um, pragmatic, way more like rule and regulation oriented. It's more focused on building something. And they are a little bit more action oriented because that's a, a cardinal sign but it's like slow steady action and looking toward future goals and what you can build and that type of thing um, would that be true for the hierophant yeah absolutely um, and that leads me really nicely actually on to the next part of this so uh, it's probably not very clear there but if you see these two guys here in the front yeah they're actually initiates so they would be like novices or neophytes and what that talks about, if you can see in the middle there as well, just beneath his feet, he's got the keys. Mm -hmm. So what that represents is the process of initiation. So when you're going through any sort of initiation or any kind of spiritual work, especially in like the uh, religious or maybe even, you know, ritualistic sort of energy, you are looking at that very slow, steady, progressive. You have to have sort of one, uh, one understanding, one set of knowledge, before you get sort of privy to the next. Yeah, like a spiritual discipline. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Um, and the Hierophant, so we talked about society, mm -hmm. let's take it right back. The Hierophant is where you would meet in the old world, you know, like the church was kind of the ruler of everything, even kings yeah. and queens <laughs> kind of, you know, had their will bent by the, by the church because they ruled kind of everything. And this is where you kind of see that. It's where you see that the world has an imposition on your life in some way, shape or form. And this kind of represents that intermediary, um, which is interesting because when you talk about it like that, it does seem so much more Capricornian. Mm -hmm. Especially because of that association with like the priesthood and like the church and, and religion and all that, because the Catholic Church specifically is a very Capricornian institution. It is absolutely ruled by Capricorn. I don't care what anybody else says. Uh, Ksenia Moore and I have talked about this a little bit too in previous videos. And it's because this was like the main governing body for like hundreds and hundreds of years. It's definitely very rule and religion based. There's a lot of fear that's involved. In the Catholic religion, I was raised Catholic. I'm not hating on Catholics, but it's like all around fear and guilt mm -hmm. and structure and rules and regulations and restrictions and um, all this kind of stuff. So it's it's very Capricornian, almost to the point of being like excessive. Um, whereas not every religion is like that, but they all do have that Capricornian component, right? There are certain rules that you have to abide by in order to find salvation, in order to make, move to the next level. If it's something where you're, um, you know, an initiate. Like there's always that Capricornian component. It's not just floating around, you know, unless you're like some sort of new age spirituality, that's not really a structured yeah. religion though. It's, it's different than that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's really interesting that you mentioned that as well, because uh, in one of the other decks that I have, uh, the Hierophant card is actually called Faith. And mm -hmm. it's surrounded by all the different faith symbols of the world. And this very much is, is it. Um, and it's kind of one of the interesting overlaps as well, because I kind of see Taurus, even though it is very much, uh, you know, about the, the physical, tangible world. When you think about, um, you know, things like money, so that would definitely be sort of the smaller aspect of it. The, uh, the emperor talked about the smaller institutions that make these things up, whereas the hierophant is going to be banks. It's mm. going to be the big banks. It's going to be those, you know, when it, we're talking about the Tory, Taurus aspect, if uh, the empress was like the money and the environment or the things that the money could give you, the Hierophant would be where that money comes from. It would be those bigger sort of larger institutions and those, again, very Capricornian. That's so interesting because um, you think about it again in terms of that, like religion and all of that, like what do we worship nowadays? What provides yeah. the structure for our society, <laughs> the rules, the regulations? It's all, it's all based on money. And Taurus Absolutely. is definitely a money sign, but there's a Capricornian aspect to that. Capricorns are very good with their money. <laughs> yeah. They're so true, so true. I have uh, two Capricorn sisters 
and both of them are whizzes when it comes to that sort of stuff. Uh, very pragmatic, very cautious when it comes to those things. And uh, I've always said as well, you know, don't ever go up in battle with them because they'll just wait until you die. <laughs> they won't <laughs> fight you, they'll just wait you out. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And, and that's a tourist thing too. Like I know a lot of tourist people that are really into like money management investments. A lot of them are bankers <laughs> and things like that. Are they like, they have these big portfolios with all this stuff that I don't understand. Like it, that's definitely a tourist thing too. Um, so yeah. So what are some of the additional sort of correspondences to tourists that you see? So, I mean, the finance is definitely the big yeah. one here, uh, for sure. And then when you see here the two pillars, uh -huh. you see how they're made of stone? That's to remind you of almost like the physical material world, right? So, and we're talking about how it kind of houses you mm -hmm. rather than, uh, say, sort of like the bigger structures that you walk into. So this is where you see more of the earthy sort of aspect i don't know i think for me when i think about capricorn i tend to think about sort of big imposing kind of structures mm -hmm. whereas when i think about taurus i'm like yeah you know my hands and my toes in the dirt and <laughs> you know like digging things up and stuff and this is very much about that when you think about the the process of initiation mm -hmm. it very much is that you have to go into the depths of it there's no um you know again there's no surface stuff to it but you will kind of you'll have to do the work behind it this is that's the other thing with the hierophant card as well it doesn't give anything easy you have to kind of plod and plod and plod with it that's interesting and that's interesting too that connection that you're talking about with like digging in the dirt and the initiate and all of that i know that there are certain secret societies where i have <laughs> some first-hand knowledge from well second-hand knowledge at least where they actually have you like dig a grave and then like you lay in it <laughs> as part of the initiation process. Like you're very literally like digging in the soil and connecting with that earth. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's really interesting that you mentioned that as well, because if you look at his scepter, that's one of the, um, that's one of the telltale signs of his position right? And it's the same with the crown. There's that understanding that in order to go on to the next level, mm -hmm. you have to kind of leave behind what and who you were. Oh, That's how he's yeah. able to kind of don that sort of cloak. Yeah. And that's sort of like symbolic, like you're digging your grave. It's like the death of who you were. And then you're kind of re-emerging into something else that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that as well is another thing. There's this idea that it ties you into the earth. Mm -hmm. And if you look, I, they're not very clear, but if you look at the tops of the pillars, mm -hmm. you can see kind of like a little nod to the Taurus. Okay, not yeah. a great deal, but it's kind of in there if you look for it. Well, in um, that like elaborate sculpt sculpture with like all the intricacies and all that, it's like very Taurus. Like sculptures in general are ruled by Taurus, like taking stone and turning it into something really beautiful and like artistic. That's a very <laughs> Taurus thing architecture as well yes. that's the other one yeah um big one for this so if you were reading somebody's cards and this card would show up with say a travel card like the six of swords mm -hmm. this person would very likely be going to somewhere that is like an, an old architecture place somewhere that's tends to be really beautiful uh if you see it with the nine of pentacles say that's like somebody that is a sculptor like literally somebody that uses their hands to create things uh, so yeah for sure i mean this card as well i've seen it represent sacred and holy sites as well and generally places that tend to be more beautiful or more pleasing to the eye rather than sort of stark and imposing okay that makes sense yeah and like those really intricate like old churches and things like that that's like what comes to mind like going to you know someplace in europe where they have like really nice or even i mean in england they have some of that too <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. well we've got the big one we have is stonehenge there's a smaller one called avebury as well mm -hmm. um yeah a, another thing with the hierophant card i've actually seen this represent the louvre in uh, paris as well yeah that would make a lot of sense because i've yeah. definitely i've been there <laughs> oh awesome um so i've got a question for you what how does um so when we think about taurus everybody talks about money and you know like being grounded and stuff mm -hmm. what's the most serious aspects of taurus like how does that how does that show up in taurian energy the more serious aspects um yeah. i guess what do you mean by that because like the hierophant is quite 
imposing it's not like a subtle card it's very much kind of I mean kind of like Taurus about as subtle as a brick yeah uh, well, that, I mean, that would be part of it. Like, they're not subtle. <laughs> they're very <Yeah. laughs> like, simple, straightforward. Like, this is this, and that's what it is. Um, but I would say in terms of, like, something that's more imposing or a little bit more, um, like, the energy that you're describing, like, Taurus people, they're very stubborn, and they stick to their guns, and they stick to what they want, and they're very – it's very hard to get a Taurus, especially someone with, like, a ton of Taurus energy to change their mind. Um, so right now, yeah, Uranus is in Taurus. A lot of Taurus people are having to go through those changes and it's especially hard for them. But as a fixed earth sign, when a Taurus decides something, they decide that this is the right thing and this is the right path and this is what they're going to do. It's so hard to <laughs> redirect them from that. <laughs> So it's kind of, it's almost like a bull, right? It's like that bull, it's going to be pretty docile until it decides it wants to charge. And then you're not going to stop it from going on that path. Yeah, just kind of get out of the way, really. Yeah. Uh, speaking yeah. of um, Uranus in, in Taurus at the moment, a uh, very, very interesting thing that I noticed about that. So I'm obviously an Aquarius sun. Um, and up until Uranus moved into Taurus, I didn't have that much of a, you know, Taurus was one of the least sort of performing videos that I have. Since mm. it's been in there, it's like my highest. <laughs> like, <laughs> and maybe it's that whole mutual reception type thing. Yeah, that's so interesting. And I mean, you know, um, Aquarius rules, or sorry, Uranus rules astrology and things like that, but all things that are alternative and different. And they're going through a lot of changes. They're probably like, what the hell is going on? I need to look to, because that's the thing too, with like astrology, like I don't get a lot of clients that have a lot of Taurus energy. Like specifically Taurus people, they don't care. Like it's not tangible. They can't see it. So it doesn't, it doesn't usually matter to them. Even if they're a little bit interested, it's like, this is not like a tangible, real solid thing. So mm. they're more interested in what's solid. And, um, yeah, I actually, I think I've had a few more Taurus people more recently. So that's interesting. Um, the yeah. videos my Taurus does. All right. It's Gemini that does not do well for me for some reason. Gemini's and they leave like the nastiest comments on my, I don't know. It's me, I think personally. And like the Gemini energy, it's my eighth house, but they like leave more often than not like mean comments or like send me like weird emails like gemini's i don't i don't know yeah. why i'm not saying gemini's <laughs> particularly do this but they do it to me yeah yeah it's really interesting isn't it to see how your your own sort of energy interacts with the other signs and stuff mm -hmm. and it's true because i have there's certain signs that my videos it doesn't matter what i put in them they just don't do very well mm -hmm. um so it is it's really intriguing and that whole thing like i said taurus is just it's now my my biggest like every week it just it's up there so i'm like okay um all right well in in that same sort of vein uh, at the moment Uranus is in Taurus what would be sort of like a, a big piece of advice that you would give them about how to manage that kind of a transit um so this is kind of a difficult one because people with a lot of Taurus I mean they're you're, it's you have to let go of something that you really thought was solid in your life anyone who everyone's having this in some area of their chart yeah so you're there's something in your life that was very solid and that you thought was going to be stable and it was going to stay the same pretty much forever that is going to be subject to change for everyone but for Taurus people it's going to be way stronger and you're going to be looking at things that you never even thought that you would be looking at because it's so outside of your wheelhouse and so outside of the box and that's going to be hard if you're not willing to make those adjustments and to move quickly because I'm seeing a lot of tourist people where it's like the time is now and I know it's now for them but they can't see that because they're they want to stick with what they have and then also kind of dip their toes in the water and all these different places which is mm -hmm. good initially but you very rapidly need to move into one of those things that you're kind of touching on right mm -hmm. and I'm seeing a lot of resistance where I know that a lot of these Taurus people are going to be missing the mark. It's like you're, the timing is now and Taurus already has an issue with timing. Like they'll miss opportunities because they take so much time to make a decision and to make those changes and to stick to things to the point where when they finally do it, the, like it's, it's gone, it's not there anymore. So yeah. this is one of those times where you can't do that. Um, and maybe that's part of that hierophant energy too, like, you know, yeah. sticking to things and maybe having an inappropriate sense of timing because you're so adherent to certain rules, regulations, the way things are. 
Um, yeah. I don't know if that's absolutely no that's perfect and it, i really like what you said about the you know the whole idea of it being completely solid mm -hmm. that's the hierophant when you think about the power of the church in the old world it was kind of like this unstoppable immovable force and everything and everyone kings queens paupers and peasants alike were kind of caught in that vortex uh, that's broken down and given way to banks, financial institutions, money, all of that sort of stuff. Which we're trying to hold and up the way things are so intensely right now with Uranus and Taurus, it's the same thing. Um, yeah. That's so interesting. And yeah. like in terms of people, like what would it represent? So like architects, bankers, priests? Architects, bankers, for sure, absolutely. Um, people that, believe it or not as well, people that work in government, I see this a lot for people that work in, you know, I mean, like really high level positions. Yeah. Uh, I see it a lot for people that, um, you know, very often company owners. Uh, I've seen this for a few people that are energy workers, but they were all energy workers that work with money and money blocks. That's crazy. And so, that makes yeah. sense though, the government connection. Um, I talk a lot with my friend Chriselda, who's been on my channel before. And one of the things that she talks about is that like politics and like, you know, government, that's like a new form of religion, essentially, like your political affiliations and who you're supporting in the government. It's almost like you're supporting some sort of deity. It's like the yeah. exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's really interesting that you say that as well, because it's true when you think about excuse me when you think about politicians nowadays they're either kind of like you said deified or villainized you know mm -hmm. they're kind of like well you know if you support that party then you're one of the bad guys and you're selling your soul and you, you know yeah and it's like if you want you know a good society if you want what you want you know for the world you have to support this person there's an intermediary you don't have the power to change anything or make things better on your own you need these you know deities these public figures to do it for you it takes the power away from the individual just like the catholic church did just like religion oftentimes does because people are submitting to this like authority um but anyway we're getting on a tangent that i feel like is going to be <laughs> Maybe that's for another video because that's, that's awesome. I actually feel like as well, this is quite relevant for now, this Hierophant card. I mean, yeah. I know it probably doesn't tally up so much with the astrology, but when you think about the censorship and stuff, mm -hmm. bigger governing bodies. Uh, so like... I usually see this as well. The other thing that you can see with this card is the bureaucracy that you come up against the red tape you know where you you can't sort of get past or beyond something one of the really interesting things about this card uh, this card as well is the number is the number five which mm -hmm. is all about change so it's kind of at odds with the energy of the card itself if that makes any sense yeah that's weird the symbolism in this card is so fascinating. This is like the most fascinating card because it's things that I've thought about that are not usually, the connections are not usually made overtly like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, cool. I mean, I'm, I'm a bit of a geek with this stuff. And so what I've tried to do is draw from various different sources. Mm -hmm. And when I, you know, when I think about my own practice with tarot, I tend to look at where is it that I see this on a consistent basis? Mm -hmm. So it will be people that are coming up against stuff with, uh, you know, bigger governing bodies. It will be people that are working in government. I've seen it for a few CEOs for, you know, for people that work in really high positions. Um, if you were to see it, say with somebody that was in the military, you would be looking at a general. Or, you know, somebody that's, is, I don't know if that's like a really high position. I think so. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> uh, yeah, it, it would be somebody that was like really high up. And it tends to be um, the kind of card that talks about the corridors of power. Uh, so, you know, again, in terms of like, if you were doing a world reading, that's a head of state. Okay. Yeah. You know, or maybe even royalty as well. I've actually seen it represent royals at, at some point as well okay that's so interesting it's just the combination of like religion and like authority that interests me with this <laughs> um, and yeah it's true so well, when you think about it they're kind of linked mm -hmm. well they're definitely linked but it's <laughs> well, as we've way. seen <laughs> yeah <laughs> cool well what else <laughs> um 
that's about as much as I, as I have. I mean, the, okay. the red card, the, the red card, <laughs> the red part is kind of the, the link to the five energy, which is all okay. about the change, driving towards something new, uh, and mm -hmm. also where you kind of meet that line, uh, which kind of ties into what we were talking about earlier about Taurus being immovable. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine a double Taurus and you say to them, no, you can't do that. And they're like already doing it. Like they're yeah. like, they're <laughs> stop it. If they haven't started, they'll be like, okay, whatever. Like, cause it, it's less work. <laughs> but like if they've started it there, you can't tell them that. <laughs> Not going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, wow. Well, thank you so much. There's yeah. more that I've taken away from it. Is there anything else that you've got as a, I feel like this is good. We, I mean, we covered a lot about this energy and I'm super excited for our next car, which is the lovers, because your take on it is Gemini, right? And I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, this is probably going to be Libra. And then it made perfect sense when I read all of your explanations for the Gemini, like Libra is totally the justice card. So mm. like, I love it. So yeah, I'm super excited for the next video. If you guys want to watch the next video, it's going to be next week on Raphael's channel, Radiant Reality. I'll post a link down in the description below. And if you, enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and be sure to share this with people if you think that they'll benefit from this really interesting information. This is probably my favorite one so far. So um, thank you again, Raphael, and I'll see you next time. Awesome.